Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And this is the iPhone 13 mini, Apple's smallest phone in this year's lineup. Now, although it's small in both price and size, it's not when it comes to the features that it's packing. It's got an upgraded camera, screen and battery, and it has the new cinematic mode and image stabilization. But let me show you why I think this is the sleeper phone to buy, and it's probably the best value for money in the entire lineup. It's got everything that the iPhone 13 has and some of the features from the Pro, at least the features that you would probably use. And something I've mentioned before is all of the videos on this channel are actually filmed using an iPhone. So over the last year, I've either used the iPhone 12 or the 12 Pro Max. But moving forward, I will be using the 13 Pro Max as well as this 13 mini. That's how confident I am in the quality of this little phone. And this phone is tiny. I think over the last five or six years of having the Max and the plus size phones, it's really made this phone look even smaller. But just to demonstrate how small it is, this is it compared to the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Design-wise, it comes with the same square light design that we've seen on the other iPhone 13 models as well as last year's 12. But just like with the non-pro iPhone 13, the mini comes with a glossy back and it's got the matte finish aluminium bands. I actually really like the bands being matte, it's far less of a fingerprint magnet as the gloss ones you see on the pro. But as it's got a glossy back, it means that the back is going to show just as many fingerprints as the screen. To be honest, I just want an all matte finish, so a matte rear like we see on the pros, and then the matte bands like we see on the non-pro. But as for the colour, this is the product red, and I'll tell you what, it really pops. It's not a colour that I would normally go for as I play it safe with the graphite or the black, but this just works. But what do you think? Is this a colour that you would go for, or do you think you would go for one of the others? Down the bottom, we've got the speaker grills, and we've still got the lightning port as well, so still no USB-C this year. So obviously this design is nothing new, it's what we've seen on last year's models and the other 13 models, but I think it looks really nice. So it's no good having a colour this vibrant if I'm going to hide it, so I've actually got my first ever transparent case for it. It's one of the Apple MagSafe cases, and as you can see, you can see the MagSafe on the back here, but it snaps on and it looks great. Now I've not received my screen protector yet for the phone, but I've actually ordered the Spigen full screen coverage. This is the same that I've gone for on the Pro and the Pro Max, and they fit perfectly. So until that arrives, I'll need to be extra careful with this one. Even though it's got a ceramic shield on the front, I'm still taking no chances as I have scratched phones in the past. And if you'd like to know which screen protector I've gone for, I have linked to that in the description. Oh, and another thing that I've not used before, and that's the MagSafe wallets. They've actually upgraded it this year with the NFC chip, so if it's removed from the phone, it will actually prompt you after 60 seconds. Now this is a great idea if you were to lose it, or if it was to fall off your phone, as you would know exactly where you've lost it. Now I'll be honest, I actually thought the screen on the Mini would just feel too small and almost uncomfortable to use. But having used it for the last few days and filming with it, I've realised it's absolutely fine. Plus as the screen carries most of the features we saw on last year's Pro models, it's actually a pretty decent package. So it's got a 5.4 inch OLED Super Retina display, that's the same screen type we've got on the iPhone 13. It supports HDR and it's got a PPI or a pixel per inch of 476, that's actually higher than the Pro models. When it comes to the smaller screen, there are only a few differences between this and the Pro models. The first being it's not quite as bright. So the max brightness on the Mini is only 800 nits, that's the same as the 12 Pro last year, whereas the 13 Pros, they max out at 1000 nits. HDR is the same on both models, they max out at 1200 nits. And in day-to-day -day use, 800 nits is absolutely fine. I had no issues last year on my 12 Pro Max, so you'd have no issue with the 13 Mini. And secondly, it does not support Apple's new ProMotion or the 120Hz response. This means you're still getting last year's 60Hz screen. There's nothing wrong with that as such, as most people probably won't even notice for general viewing. Personally, I really like the 120Hz screen that we've seen on the Pro. It's just so much smoother. So other than the ProMotion and the extra 200 nits of brightness, that's basically the difference between the Mini and the Pro. Well, spec-wise, the 13 Mini once again matches and slightly improves upon last year's 12 Pro. It's got a new A15 chip, 6-core CPU and 4-core GPU. It's actually a step up from the 12 Pro and a step down from the 13 Pro. The fact that I'm even comparing this 13 Mini to the 12 Pro tells you just how good this little phone is. I use the 12 Pro Max to create every single video on this channel since it launched, so I could technically use the iPhone 13 Mini and get the same results. So with that in mind, if you want to replicate what I've done over the last year, you could get yourself an iPhone 13 Mini and do exactly that. But the biggest difference between the Pro and the non-Pro models, especially the 13 mini, is the camera setup. So like with the normal iPhone 13, well the mini comes with just two lenses, which have had a new arrangement on the back. We've got the wide f1.6 aperture lens, and the ultra wide f2.4 lens. Now the quality of the photos that I've taken with these lenses have been incredible. Not only looking at them back on the screen, but viewing them on my Mac as well. 
The colors, depth of field, focus, sharpness, everything looks great. The lenses have had an upgrade too, so they are even better at taking photos in low light with that faster shutter. You've also still got modes like portrait, panoramic, and it supports night mode. On top of this, the 13 mini comes with this year's new sensor shift image stabilization. This will make taking photos and videos even easier and smoother. The only thing the 13 mini doesn't have is pro RAW. So if you wanted to take photos and edit them in a lossless RAW format, well, you cannot do that. That really is a pro feature. All of these photos on my Instagram, they were taken with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So similar to what you get from the iPhone 13 mini. Right, next up, the video capabilities. Let me start by saying that the 13 mini is better than the 12 Pro. Now, remember I used the 12 Pro Max to record all the videos on this channel. Well, the video you're watching now, that is also shot on the 12 Pro Max. Well, the 13 mini can do 4K 60, 1080p and slow-mo up to 240 frames per second. But the features that sets it apart from last year's Pro, you might ask? It has the new sensor shift stabilization. So footage that you do record will be so much smoother. But it also has the new cinematic mode. So if you watched my iPhone 13 Pro Max video a few days ago, you'll see some of the examples that I shared. But these clips you're seeing right now, these were recorded on the Mini. So cinematic mode adds this kind of portrait style to your videos. It will autofocus on people or items and it'll create this nice kind of bokeh look. But if you tap on the screen, you can actually manually focus as well as using that autofocus. You can even lock onto a target. So if you just press and hold, it will lock onto that object as you're moving around. On top of that, you can retrospectively change the focus point after you finish filming. Just edit the clip from the camera roll and you can change the person or item that you're focusing on. This is a really nice feature and it's great to see that we've got it on the iPhone 13 mini. One thing to note about the cinematic mode is it only shoots in 1080p at 30 frames per second. This is the same for the Pro models this year, so this is not a mini limitation. And also with the mini, there's no ProRes support, something that we're going to be seeing added to the Pro models later this year. I think the camera on the iPhone 13 mini is a real sleeper. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. There's nothing stopping you from using this to create some incredible content with it. The battery on the mini has had a boost in size and efficiency. So it comes in at 17 hours roughly. That's up by one and a half hours on last year's mini. It's not as good as the iPhone 13 or the Pro models, but that's a given because of the size of the phone. I've easily managed a four day use out of it so far, and I don't see why anybody else couldn't. Now looking at the available storage and prices for the mini, well it comes in at our 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes and 512 gigabytes. There's no one terabyte option this year like we have with the 13 Pro models. Prices are on screen now for the different sizes and considering what this phone is packed with and all the features we've gone over today, it's not bad at all. So how does the iPhone 13 mini compare to the iPhone 13 Pro? And is it really worth getting? Well, the main difference between the two, other than the obvious size, include the telephoto lens, 120Hz screen, the battery capacity, and Pro RAW and Pro Res support. If those are features that you don't need or use, the Mini is an awesome buy. And if you were wondering what you get in the box, well, it's exactly the same as the 12 models and the 13 Pro. It comes with the phone, a USB-C to lightning cable, a SIM card remover, and the Apple stickers. And just like with the 12s, there's no power brick or plug. You will need to buy one of those separately if you need one. Okay, so my final verdict on the iPhone 13 mini. And I'll tell you what, I think this is the phone to buy if you don't need the Pro features. It's the cheapest in the range and it's tiny. I think I would actually call this phone the iPhone 12 Pro mini because it's packing most of the features from the Pro model last year and it's got some extras thrown in. But what about you? Which size would you go for? Do you think the 13 mini is too small? Or are you more inclined to go for the normal 13 or the Pro models for those extra features? And that was a quick look at the iPhone 13 mini. So we're so used to having large phones now. Every phone each year gets larger and larger. And this is obviously the smallest phone and probably one of the most feature-packed smallest phones you can actually buy. But you've made it to the end of today's video, so thank you for watching. And if you drop an iPhone mini with that little Apple icon, if you can, in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up for staying until the end. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications on so you don't miss my next upload. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter where I'm trying to be a lot more active. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you next time.